Welcome to the Tech F1 show. In this episode we're going to look at DRD or drag reduction device. This is a feature that Lotus started using back in 2012 and other teams have subsequently tried to copy. We've got Mercedes having tried a variant throughout free practice and then at the Young Drivers Test in Abu Dhabi both Red Bull and Sauber also attempted to assess the qualities of DRD. DRD shouldn't really be confused with DDRS. Uh, I've seen many mainstream media still calling the drag reduction device that we've seen on both the Lotus, Mercedes, Sauber and Red Bull called DDRS. In my opinion DDRS is really a secondary function of DRS and was something that Mercedes initially came up for, with for 2012 and was subsequently used at the end of the season from Singapore onwards just at the rear wing uh, stall in the beam wing on the Red Bull. This system is completely different to, to DDRS and it's passive. It doesn't require any additional moving components, i.e. the rear wing top flap, or it doesn't re revolve around the driver using his hand or knee, etc., like the f duct used to do. The reason we didn't see Lotus or Mercedes adopt this system throughout 2012, even though they did test it through free practice, is the fact that it's quite difficult to, to get the correct settings for the speed threshold that you want the, the stall to happen at. After all, you don't want the rear wing stalling as you're just exiting the a high speed corner. But on the same token, you do want to take them the biggest advantage that's possible. So. Obviously without driver interaction through either placing their hand over a section of the cockpit or via using the DRS as a secondary function, it becomes more difficult for the teams to, to take advantage of the passive nature of these devices. So let's just have a quick look at what goes on with the particular devices at hand. As I mentioned earlier, there are differing configurations of DRD. Different type teams will try different things based on their other aero configurations. But intrinsically, there's several parts of the system that remain the same. The main part being the periscope that leads from the back of the engine cover to un the underside of the rear wing. Now, again, this is an area that some teams have tried different things with, i.e. the original Lotus version goes right to the underside of the main plane and has the slot right underneath the main plane. Whereas Mercedes tested their version along with Sauber who had theirs stopping short of the main plane. Now that would allow the, the area to be blown in a much wider area but obviously the targeting wouldn't be as good as the one that sits un right underneath the main plane. Lotus adopted a set of ears next to their airbox which are actually bonded to the chassis and that's why we've seen them covered up throughout the qualifying and race weekends when they've been using it throughout three pra free practice. Um, teams like Mercedes have added an additional section to their engine cover rather than having a section bonded to the, the chassis all the time and makes it easier to take the, the system on and off. What happens is the airflow travels through these ears or additional sections of bodywork or in the case of Red Bull it looks as if they simply use their airbox um, and it travels down the engine cover as it usually would and exits out of the outlet at the rear of the car. Lotus and Mercedes used uh, a larger section of bodywork called the monkey seat um, to ex further extract this airflow out of the back of the car. Um, what happens is the airflow continues to exit out the back of the car at its normal speed but at a certain speed threshold it gets to a point whereby that the car can't extract the airflow correctly so instead of the air becoming blocked at the front of the airbox we get a position whereby the, the air is allowed to be sent up the periscope towards the rear wing when it gets here there's ejector holes at the side of the periscope and these blow outwards across the main plane uh, disturbing the flow that would normally go underneath the main plane. This makes the wing detach and goes into a stall effectively reducing downforce and drag. So why is it taking so long to get DRD working I hear you say? Well it's a good question but 
there are many permutations that go on with the car that really revolve around the factor of DRD working correctly. As we've already mentioned, you don't want the rear wing stalling as you're coming out of a, a, a high speed corner because it could lead to, lead to some safety aspects. So you have to consider the climate changes, you have to consider the fuel load burning off of the car, you have to consider suspension setups, rear wing angle. There's all sorts of permutations that will change the, the way in which DRD would actually work. So it's a it's it's a, an area that the teams will continue to develop and I'm sure we will see at some point to, during 2013 somebody actually run a DRD device. I actually believe that the Sauber design has been put in place to cater for DRD. As you can see on the top of their rear end of their engine cover there's a little loop on the top of the outlet which in theory I believe is to house the first part of the, the periscope. We also saw on the fourth day of testing at RF this week that both Lotus and Mercedes did test DRD. It was only for very short running and both of them actually switched their setups from their previous 2012 versions. Effectively Lotus started with the periscope that ran to the underside of the main plane and switched to a Mercedes style which finished shorter of the main plane itself. So obviously the teams are trying different variants and seeing how they're actually working on their particular aero configurations. So I do foresee that we will see uh, DRD set up used throughout 2013 for qualifying in the race. But obviously due to the nature of these passive devices and the way that they actually stall, I don't believe that they're good for every particular circuit like the F-duct was. So perhaps we'll only see them on circuits where we see extremely long straights.